was that a government company? Private. It was a private company, for the very first private company to orbit the moon. Okay, we have a current competition going on right now. We have a race to space. Who's in it? Oh, you want to go over here? All right, who's in it? SpaceX. Space, SpaceX and? SpaceX is correct. Blue Origin. Blue Origin is the other. Who are the two guys that are going to be running and, and uh, competing for this coup? Um, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos and? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. We're excited to see what happens. I agree that's very exciting, but I think we have something else very exciting. Are those the only two that are going to Mars, or could there be maybe a third? The Starship Imagination. <laughs> this is the Starship Imagination. The main area is for the astronauts in the Starship Imagination to get in and out. In the main area, there's a test track for them to use their hover bikes and get around. In the middle of the main Eighteen area test track. There's a hallway that leads to, into the parking room. While they're in the hallway, there's seven other hallways that lead to their bedrooms. The meeting room is for the astronauts to talk about things and and figure out how to work stars and planets. Escape pods are for the astronauts to land on Mars. The pet room is for the astronauts to bring pets, and they might need to bring a chicken for so they can lay eggs so they can use them for egg for food, and they can use the eggshells as fertilizer. Thank you, Yvette. I would just like to brag in him for one second because every single child here did their own spaceship of imagination and then we asked the entire group which one they wanted to represent the academy and they chose Evanders. Okay, so now we know where we're going, we know maybe why we're going, but I think we need to know are we strong enough to go? So, we voted as a class and felt that we needed physical endurance. We wanted to make sure that we would last on the spaceship in, in outer space. So we did astronaut training on a weekly basis. We worked on our balance by walking across balance beams. We worked on coordination by trying to move our left and right hand at the same time. We thought it really important to also work on our balance going backwards because what happens if we're on, at the end of our spaceship and we have to actually go backwards, we're not able to turn around. So we trained the kids in walking backwards, forwards with balance. We did coordination. We also worked on their endurance and their flexibility and their ability to jump. Because as we know, we don't know what the conditions of gravity will be like. So we did astronaut training and we did a little film for you guys. So you can check it all out. Okay, if you cannot all see that, we'll play it again after the, after the performance.
Okay, so we had to decide who's going to go, and how did we decide that? My name is Travis, and I'm going to be telling you the people that we need, to, the first people we need to take to Mars. So the first person we need to take is an astrophysicist. The second person is a physician. And we also need to take a... And we also need to take a construction worker, and we also and we, lastly we and we need to take a um, leader, and and then we also need to take a pilot, and we all, and the last the last person we need to take is an IT professional <laughs> and an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I understand that you've done a little modifications on NASA's spacesuit for Mars. Would you like to explain what you've done? Yeah. So the first thing I added on the NASA spacesuit is um, thrusters. It's like Iron Man's thrusters, but they're not as powerful to make you fly. So the first thing is, is so it like let's so that since there's no gravity on Mars, you're going to be flying anywhere. So you need to have a way to steady yourself and like make yourself not wobble around. And I and the second thing is I added like a little retractable sleeve on the spacesuit where you can pull your arm out and like let's say you're trying to contact the um, space shuttle and you need to fix like the mic and so that's why I added that. And there's also like a little mini fridge in there. So you can store your space food, and you can also store your uh, drinks. Right wow. Here. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Very, very good. Is there no gravity on Mars, or just light gravity? There's no gravity. Light. I knew. Like, I knew that. Did you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we know who, what, where, when. But how are we going to live on Mars? experiencing something called climate change. The natural greenhouse gases we have are melting the polar caps in the Arctic. If the polar caps were to melt, they would melt, it would uncover a darker colored ocean below. That would attract more heat and then there's a possibility of that causing the earth and us to die. So my plan is to create a biodome that is more habitable and sustainable on Mars. On Mars it is negative 83 degrees Fahrenheit because of the such cold and outrageous temperatures, ice has been able to form on the caps of the planet. Inside of the biodome, it will be exactly like Earth, except it will be covered in a plastic biodome. I've chosen plastic because glass is too heavy. So at the same time, we'll also be recycling plastic. Plastic comes from natural materials, including fossil fuels, minerals, and plants. On Earth, we are going through climate change. Climate change means that the Earth is getting warmer, and if the Earth gets too warm, we could die. So we have to find another place to live like Mars. But we can't live there yet because it's negative 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have to think of another way to warm up Mars. My idea to make Mars warmer is to have a big mirror and reflect the sun's heat onto the planet and trap in the heat with glass. Glass is made of sand and there's a lot of sand on Mars so we can make the glass on Mars. This is my presentation on how I'm going to heat up Mars to make it more habitable and possibly be able to live there. The items that we are going to need is a fan, a heater, and a solar panel. The reason why we need the solar panel is to is because we need to bring power to the heater and the fan. The type of heater and fan that we need to bring to Mars depends on its power because we don't want to bring a heater and fan to Mars and it ends up not working. That would be bad. 
<laughs> we need to turn the heater on high and the fan on medium. The reason why the fan is on medium is so the fan does not completely cancel out the heat from the heater and instead blows it around Mars. To get that heat all around Mars though, we are going to need multiple heaters and fans. Making Mars warmer makes it more habitable because its current temperature is negative 80 degrees, making it super cold. Solar panels collect solar energy and turn that into heat to power itself on, and from there powers on the heater and the fan. Solar energy travels at the speed of light, more specifically, 186,000 miles per second. I got my idea from Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX. He tweeted saying, I quote, that there is a massive amount of CO2, carbon dioxide, on Mars that can be absorbed into the soil that would then be released upon heating. With enough energy via artificial or natural sun fusion, you can terraform almost any large rocky body. My idea is to nuke Mars, and the CO2 would be released. Mars would heat up, and it would be habitable for humans to live on. Mars is too cold to build a civilization on it, so I had an idea to warm up Mars. Copper conducts heat, so I thought if I put copper all over the planet, and attached it with wires to a piece of metal that has sun hitting it, it would warm up Mars. Thank you. <laughs> okay guys, so now we know where, how we're gonna live, what's gonna happen, we're all in great shape, right? Well, the Academy believes in one thing very strongly, and that is what? Communication. Communication. And at the Academy, we have a very, very strong program in both Mandarin and in Spanish. But for the sake of, of our time here, we're only going to do Mandarin today. Hello, my name is Desella. I was born in 2011, the year of that. I am eight years old and my favorite animal is a dog. I have a mom, I have a dad, and I have two older brothers, one older sister, no little brothers, and no little sisters. <laughs> my favorite hobby is painting. My favorite subject is art. Meow, what the means a shirt to sell? What you shall buy? Our lady, e e man, what shirt to do? What was my love? We'll see. We are now introducing the 12 Chinese characters of the Chinese year. two classes and Miss Ivy has taught them all. All the students in the older class can say it. The other ones can actually draw that out. So it's incredible. Really have your kids do their introductions for you because they are amazing. is long. Snake is sure. Horse is ma. Sheep is young. Monkey is 
holds. Mr. is Z. Dog is go. Pig is two. Most of it of the areas covered that we need with the exception of one. And that one is, are we going to be the only people that go to Mars? No. no. So we need a constitution. We, the people of Mars, are hereby establishing a constitution for and by the initial Mars landers. Our laws and rights will be equal and just for all countries landing on the planet. The government will consist of a triumvirate consisting of members of three countries. Members are elected by direct vote of the population. Members will serve a term of five years. Membership rotates among countries. The basic rules of the government are equal rights for all people, regardless of race, color, gender, and country of origin. The directorships will be established for agriculture, education, housing, air quality, treasury, commerce, science, engineering, and technology. All directorships have equal representation from each country. Directors are elected by popular vote for a period of five years. A person can be elected to the triumvirate before or after a directorship. A Supreme Court will consist of nine judges representing the various countries. They will be in charge of the law of the land. The first is which the equal rights for all citizens. All of those arriving are granted temporary citizenship for a period of 18 months. After time, they may request full citizenship. Denial of citizenship will be based upon their record. If there are any felonies, they must go back to their country of origin. Equal rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, punishment, must fit crime, Person cannot be put in prison without being given a trial by his or her peers. No capital punishment, no search or seizure without warrant from judge. Conflicts and disputes will be settled by the Supreme Court.
animation by Ryan Pereira for the Academy of the 21st Century. Dinosaurs had planted. 
Jaden and Dilly joined Jacob and Omrin in the ninja class. Pate had decided to join Ryder, who was picking vegetables and fruits for the robots that the robots had planted. Ding, 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 went the alarm. All the kids stopped and ran to the magic school bus. Mission of saving the dogs came through. Jacob began to read the report. Super kids, we need you. The Bumblebee dog spaceship has broken down on the moon. We need your help to get them back to Earth. Ryder grabbed their masks and the super kids put on their capes and were set to go to the moon. The super kids were ready for takeoff. The cows counted down for launch. Five, four, three, two, moo. Matthew drove the super kids through space and they landed on the moon in an hour. Once they landed on the moon, they loaded up the dogs. Amrin and Pate put 50 camouflage dog bones in the shuttle. When they got back to Earth, the bumblebee dogs shared the camouflage bones with the super kids. The super kids decided to eat all the bones so they could spy on Mrs. Nicole. Yeah. Mission Save the Bumblebee Dogs was a success. The super kids would continue to save our planet and friends. Thanks for coming. Thank you. 